The thing about art is it's not competitive. Everybody has their own individual style and individual idea, and that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. It's like humanity, mm -hmm. really individual. Seven years ago, we had the opportunity to bring some of the artists of British Columbia here to Painter's Lodge. And the idea behind it was to say thank you for the great uh, work that the, and the enjoyment that they've created for the art-loving population of British Columbia. And so we decided to put on what we call the Weekend of Celebration of Art. And it's grown now beyond our uh, while of the streams. They start to get out the family photos and they start yeah. to tell me stories about yeah. the cat yeah. they used to have. And uh, these things uh, give me information to build into the painting. The artists who come to Painter's Lodge are really just a slice of the spectrum of artists in British Columbia. Uh, they are, uh, I would say, to, to make a definition, the most popular artists in British Columbia. By that I mean that they are the ones that the people really bond to. These are artists who, in every case, are successful. I mean, uh, successful in that they sell enough paintings. They have an, an audience. They have a following. I think that they really are some of the very significant artists of this region. What I'm creating here is a pair of dolphins kissing. And it's called the infinite kiss, because when it's finished, it'll have the, the sign of infinity in it. For most artists that I know, especially sculptors, I know more about sculptors, is that we're inspired by our environment. BC is wonderfully sort of natural province, and uh, a lot of them go into that sort of stuff, BC art. I happen to do sort of landscapes, and I really don't know why we do landscapes. It's some way of honoring the, the environment, so something to do with that, and I get a kick out of it. Well, it's sort of incidental that I'm painting in BC. I love living here, I love gardening, it's a great place to live, but the imagery that I work on is still life that I pretty much make up, and um, the colors uh, are more tropical than British Columbian. I'm fascinated with the, the culture of the, of the Orient and Asia and the whole decorative aspect of Hi, everything. Hi, Grayson. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Do a blind print, a stampeel print. I think of my work as inscape. So I can go in any direction. And I don't think of my work as abstract. I think of it as more concrete, two points here and here, uh, leading up to more of a meant to be a spiritual thing. And I do play around with figurative work, and I have done the odd landscapes. I did them when I was a child. I did a lot of landscapes. There's something like this in Canada where somebody says, you know, I'm going to give the artist this weekend. You guys have a good time. I don't care if you show up. I don't care if you paint. I don't care if you sleep in. You guys have a good time and do whatever. We just love having you as artists. It doesn't happen. We also have up to 75 pieces of art all under one roof. It's sort of like an art gallery showing, but instead of one artist, we have a 25 or 27 artists, and each one brings in three pieces of work. Bob calls it Brush with the Masters. This is a celebration of established artists, but the diversity of these established artists is really what makes it exciting. And the fact that emerging artists are able to come here and ask questions and learn and listen, uh, I think is what makes it a, a rounded event. Yeah. I'm struggling with this acrylic. Yeah. Oh, the acrylics is just a matter of, they're the most forgiving paint you can use. This resort, which is a fishing resort, becomes a cultural resort for a weekend. And so many people who are friends of mine and people that I've met through this event come here, uh, this is the seventh year now, to celebrate the arts in this beautiful environment. I'm going to have a beer. 
It's a great thing that Bob Wright's done, I think, uh, for art and art appreciation. He would never ask me for a sponsorship. So we decided this year we'd give them a sponsorship and we did the beautiful catalog. And that was a lasting legacy. Painters at Painters uh, is an extremely important event uh, for Canberra River and, and the region of Canberra River. It has really grown over the last seven years. There are more workshops now, more demonstrations of painters and panel discussions have become more interesting. I had students in the high school level who were extremely talented, but they had no desire. They didn't do anything, still haven't, but you know they might when they get to 50. And I think about Emily Carr who stopped painting altogether for 10 years. And when she was 55, she picked it up again and then did the, her, her most amazing work. In that this is a wonderful opportunity, I'd heard about it for years and years, to be close to other artists, to see their work, to hear them talk about their lives. When I grew up in Billy Elliot country, I didn't become a ballet dancer, but <laughs> <laughs> God forbid. Every year they add one or two new artists, which makes the equation more interesting and, and uh, more dynamic. The two artists uh, that were voted in this year by the painters at Painters were Catherine Moffat and Brian Johnson, both excellent artists in their own right. And Catherine has been a professional in Victoria for uh, probably the last 10 or maybe 15 years, who's uh, made a particular specialty of still life, of painting. Her technique is flawless. It's very exciting to have been voted in. I was very surprised and honored because a lot of these people are artists that I've looked up to for years. Brian Johnson is a Victoria artist whose work is so surpassingly good in technique, it's just frightening. Over the years we've bumped into each other, done workshops together, and so it's kind of like, and I've heard other people say it, kind of like old home week. This is sort of like a snowball rolling downhill. I couldn't stop it if I, if I wanted to. So it's a very, very successful event. The important thing we've got to remember, it's a non-profit making event. Um, we have uh, some 800 people on the grounds today. They want to come in, meet the artists, see them painting on the ground, and if nothing else, enjoy the beautiful flowers at this time of the year. It's scheduled for next year uh, on the last weekend in May.